Hello and welcome to another session on Gems of Geometry. So in the previous uh, session, we had discussed about uh, various types of quadrangles. If you remember, there were three types of quadrangles which we discussed and uh, I told you that we are going to use these concepts or definitions and notations which we discussed in the previous session. Those were, uh, you know, convex uh, quadrangle, then there was a re-entrant which is also called as concave uh, quadrangle and then there is something called a crossed quadrangle, okay. So in this particular session, we are going to discuss a very famous theorem which is called Varignan's theorem and you would have studied this in your uh, uh, ninth grade or 10th grade syllabus in congruent triangles as well, but you might not be aware of the name and the history of this theorem. So this theorem dates back to uh, 1710s, 1720s. So, you know, uh, it was given by, approved by um, Pierre Verignan and he was a French uh, mathematician. And uh, it, this was published after his death, that is posthumously. So around 17, I think uh, the year was 1731 when it was published. So if you get a chance, do, uh, do a bit of uh, research about uh, Pierre Verignan. He has contributed a lot in uh, mechanics as well and calculus and uh, Leibniz was his contemporary and uh, um, Newton again. So Leibniz, Newton, Hooke and all these people were contemporaries. So uh, uh, he was a philosopher, as in, I told you, a uh, French mathematician. And he was the person who came up with this uh, very simple but very elegant proof. Okay. Now, uh, the Verigny's theorem suggests that if you have a quadrilateral or quadrangle, as we had uh, discussed, that we will be using the term quadrangle instead of quadrilateral. So if you have a quadrangle, ABCD, I have shown you, this is a convex quadrangle, you can see that. And there is a, a concave or a re uh, you know, quadrangle IJKL, right? Now, what has uh, what the theorem suggests is if you take the midpoints of all these, uh, all the sides of the quadrangle and join them, you will get a parallelogram, point number one. And then second is the area of the parallelogram so formed, that means in this case EFGH and in this case uh, MNOP, right? that these two parallelograms are going to be uh, areas of these two parallelograms is going to be half of the original quadrangle okay so that means area of efgh is half of abcd so area of mnop is half of ijkl okay both of them are parallelogram midpoints of the sides joined together you will get a polygon which is a parallelogram in whether it is a concave or a convex uh, Parallelogram. We will also see in the next uh, session uh, what happens when there is a crossed quadrangle. You remember cross, crossed quadrangle was A, B, C, D and then back to A. So this was kind of a you know twisted quadrangle which we discussed last time, isn't it? So what we are going to do is uh, this in this session we are going to prove for convex and we'll see if time permits we'll do for concave as well. And then we'll also take a crossed crossed quadrangle. But in crossed uh, quadrangle uh, we will come back to negative areas, right? Where if you see the, you will definitely get a parallelogram over there as well. But the area of the parallelogram will be the difference of the two triangle, two triangles. Or you know, uh, we will elaborate more when we uh, uh, discuss that because uh, that will be a better way to uh, do this. Okay. Now, so let's take up uh, the quadrangle which is here A B C D. What I'm going to do is first of all show you that yes, indeed, it is a a parallelogram all the time. So hence, if I move this point D, you can check. Let me just take this point D and move it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this point D around. So see, if I move this point D around, everywhere you can uh, figure out that you know this is a parallelogram. Though uh, by look you cannot uh, say that, but you can always see that they are parallel and equal. And uh, one uh, way to do it will be to measure the angle. So I'll show you one configuration. So let's say. I measure this angle 118.75 just keep a track of GFE now so you can see both of them are you know uh, equal so that is one indication that they are actually a parallelogram so let me take away this and uh, so hence um, H is the midpoint of AD E is the midpoint of AB F is the midpoint of BC and G is the midpoint of CD and we have drawn a parallelogram so how do we prove or basically I have joined the two or four vertices, but how do we prove that they are uh, indeed a parallelogram? So here is where we will be using 
something called the midpoint theorem if you remember uh, we had discussed some time ago so what is a uh, midpoint theorem if you remember there was a triangle okay if there is a triangle and if you join the midpoints of the triangle so the midpoints of the triangle are joined two sides are joined then this side this particular uh, you know segment is parallel to the third side we know that and also this is half of half of the uh, base right so this if this is x and this is y so clearly x is y by 2 so this was from midpoint theorem so if you uh, don't remember it i would suggest you go to section 1 in the videos in the description you will see uh, the midpoint theorem and its explanation okay so this is what we are going to use it okay now so let's take the quadrilateral a b c d okay so in this uh, a b c d quadrilateral e and h are the midpoint so clearly e h is going to be parallel to what b d simple b d right b d is the diagonal which i have joined also also we know that e h is equal to half of b d because in this case b d is the base angle now if you look at this triangle which one b c d then what can i say about this so f g f g is parallel to again b d and also f g is equal to half b d is it now we are getting a quadrangle where e f g h is the quadrangle and the opposite sides are equal so if you see e f is not only f parallel to f g y because they are both parallel to b d as well as ef is equal to fg and this is equal to half of bd both of them are half of bd so clearly efgh is a parallelogram so i don't need to i know uh, work hard on that so efgh is a parallelogram no problem so i'm writing in short hand okay so efgh is a parallelogram okay then what theorem did we use this was all based on midpoint mid point theorem of a triangle midpoint theorem okay just have a look on midpoint theorem and it will become very easy for you now the second part is the area of efgh is equal to half of abcd how do we do that so um, yeah so if you can see uh, for that we will be needing one more theorem and that theorem suggests that the area of this top triangle here if i just you know mark these lines over here so this triangle e f h a e h sorry so triangle a e h will be one fourth of triangle area a b d how is that yeah so how is that possible and uh, you can use the uh, similar angle or similar similarity of triangles to prove that and we know that uh, if you look at this diagram angle a is common and this angle e is equal to angle b because of corresponding angles isn't it so hence can we not say that triangle a e h is similar to triangle a b d a b d therefore we can always say we know a theorem which says that area of area of two similar triangles a e h in this case so let me write it little clearly so what i'm saying is please pay attention is this that area of triangle a e h a e h upon area of triangle which one a b d a b d will be equal to the ratio of the uh, square of the ratios of their sides corresponding sides right so e h upon b d okay whole square this theorem we have studied already now eh by bd clearly clearly is half so this will be 1 by 4 okay so we now know area of a e h is 1 fourth of abd okay so hence first relation is area of triangle a e h is equal to half or sorry 1 by 4 of triangle abd triangle abd without any doubt is it similarly you can all say that area of triangle which one um ebf triangle e b f is equal to 1 by 4 um uh, yeah 1 by 4 of triangle which one a b c right triangle a b and c this is the second thing and third 
area of this triangle this one here this one is how much uh, fcg f c g okay so even if you don't mention the delta it's okay so 1 by 4 triangle which one b c d if you check b c d by the same logic and the fourth one i'm writing over here is triangle area of triangle which one this one now h d g h uh, no we'll have to write anti clockwise positive if you're taking h g d h g d is equal to 1 by 4 and triangle a c d right triangle a c d i hope this is clear these are all areas so if i have missed writing a r don't worry okay so is that fine so these are the four relationship i will get a e h is 1 by 4 of a b d e b f is 1 by 4 of a b c f c g f c g is uh, 1 by 4 of uh, b c d and uh, h g d h g d is 1 by 4 of a c d fantastic now if you look at the parallelogram area what is parallelogram area by the way so area of i'm simply writing e f g h this is what we are interested in finding out is how much this is equal to uh, nothing but the full quadrilateral that is area of a b c d and minus all the four triangles which we calculated over here this one this one this one not this one this one this one this one this one and this one right if you see a b c d minus a e h e b f f c g and h g d if i take away all these triangles then i will get the area of the uh, parallelogram over there isn't it so area of a b c d minus let me write all of that so 1 by 4 is common so i can write 1 by 4 common and within brackets what can i mention triangle a b d triangle a b d plus triangle a b c a b c plus triangle b c d b c d plus triangle a c d a c d okay so these are the two uh, or four triangles here now a b d if you see a b d plus b c d right so check a b d plus b c d this will give you another quadrilateral a b c d is it so can i not write this same as area of a b c d minus 1 by 4 is outside the bracket and i will get one area of a b c d plus if you check, check the other one that is a b c this one a b c and a c d right so these two combine and these two combined are individually giving you one quadrilateral each you can check that so again i will write area of a b c and d okay and close the bracket okay so what is this twice of a b c d and by four that means this is half of a b c d so if you solve this you'll get half of area of a b c d and hence Prove that is what we wanted to prove that area of this parallelogram EFGH is equal to half of area of the quadrangle, quadrangle, right? Area of parallelogram EFGH is half quadrangle area ABCD. Now, this is for a convex um, quadrangle, but it is equally true for a concave uh, quadrangle. So, what you can do is you can try this as, a, as an exercise and you will be able to get that. So, uh, you know, the process will not be much of a different, uh, you know, much of difference from this, what we have done here. So, area of uh, this parallelogram P or MNOP will be equal to half of the area of uh, uh, IJKL, right? So, this is also you can establish. So, try this as an exercise and uh, let us know if you face any issues proving that. So, hence, in this session, we could prove Varignan's theorem for a, a quadrangle which is a convex, right? So, convex quadrangle, we prove this theorem. We prove that if you join the midpoints of the uh, sides of the quadrangle, you will get a parallelogram, and the area of that parallelogram is going to be half of that of the quadrangle. 
So in the next session, what we are going to do is we are going to prove the same thing for a uh, crossed uh, quadrangle, right? Crossed crossed quadrangle. So where you had seen that there is a you know twist given to the two opposite sides, and you get a crossed quadrangle. And um, we will try and establish the same proof there as well. But the meaning of uh, area of the quadrilateral over there would be slightly different, which we will be di discussing in the next session. I hope you like this one. So see you again in the next session with the second part of the proof. Bye. Till that time. Bye bye.